This was easy. All, All right, right. 97.7 Out Loud Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. And right here, right now, we actually have marijuana enthusiasts. We have a owner of CRS Battle League, a radio show host, MC. This individual is a jack of all trades out in the 619 of San Diego, California. We got Sherry Ellie right here live on the line. How are you doing this evening? Man, I'm doing so, I'm great. I'm outstanding. Thank you for asking and thank you for having me. I got you doing? You are most certainly welcome. And as for uh, as for me, I'm doing pretty good down here in Canada. Just uh just kind of enjoy, just enjoying the last little bit of the good weather we got. I'm, I'm seeing the news on KTLA that you guys got a massive heat wave down there. I don't know whether to be jealous and wish we had some of that heat or be like, damn. Well, let me put it to you like this. I was in Louisiana for about the last three weeks. And today, either today is a lot cooler or, or it's nothing compared to Louisiana, but they always had the rain that was it. So I'm back home. There is a heat wave, but I'm not feeling it because I'm coming from the south. I gotta ask because I've, I've, me personally, I've never, unfortunately, I've never had the opportunity to visit uh, California, and of course, I've never been down south either. So I have to ask when, when you say like the Louisiana weather is worse than California, like how hot does it get out there in Louisiana? Well, you know, it's. I think the difference is it's very humid there. But what I like is there when the rain is coming down, it kind of cools it off. So you, so one day you can wake up and it's 103 outside, Ooh. and an hour later it could be pouring rain. But guess what? The water is not cold because of the humidity. So it's it's very different, and you know it's it's just different. But in San Diego, we've got the beaches. It's just different, but I think that everybody should experience going from coast to coast. And I don't think that one is no worse than the other one. It's just that I'm accustomed to California. And also as well, just diving right into this interview, interview Sherry, because I know you're a very busy individual. But I have to ask, what originally made you decide to venture into the music industry initially? Because you, you do so much amazing things for your city of San Diego. Thank you so much. I'll tell you what happened is... Um, I was a singer when I was younger. So what I did was I went to Alex Pro's studio, a Russian friend of mine, and I started doing hooks there. But I really came there originally just to do um, a, a song for my husband for Christmas. And then I started doing hooks, and before you know it, I started, I got challenged to rap. So my very first song, which is on YouTube, Cut It, Roll It, Smoke It, um, that is what inspired me to ha to well, go ahead and have a clothing line because I've all I've been smoking weed for fifty years, so I've jumped right into it. I'm not a rapper, but I can rap. Do you understand? My preference is to be in the hip hop community, which is why I have the four CRS, which is none other than Cutting Road Smoke It, um, that rap battle league. I have the battle league, so there's a platform for us to keep it as hip hop as we can and about the culture here in San Diego. And that has just, that sort of fell into my lap because I started off as just a sponsor. So things have been good, but like I said, I'm 63 years old. I Every now and then I'd like to do remixes of some rap songs, and those usually are used for the 420 podcast. So everything's under the umbrella of way back when, when it was illegal. I mean, people were doing time. That's how long I've been smoking weed. But long before they legalized it, I came out with the clothing line, and I came out strong, and lo and behold, I got to live on this earth and see it get legalized. And I'm just going to say this, because I did not even I imagine when you actually said you're 63 years old. I'm honestly going to say, I, I I don't know if it's the weed that's making you look so young, but I feel like I need to start smoking more. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is the weed. <laughs> I think it's the weed, and I think it's the, you know, just... Always, I have good genes anyway, so, you know, shout out, let my mother, grandmother, and everybody else rest in peace, family. But I really feel like, you know, I didn't drink. I smoked. So I don't know, but you get what I'm saying? Something helped, but it's because of all the components that were in the weed. You understand what I mean? That they are now saying CBD. I've been smoking weed for 50 years, so even I have this one disease called myasthenia gravis, but it's, it never got out of control. And I believe it's because of the medication, or sorry, sorry the, the medicinal things that are in marijuana that saved what could have been something disastrous. 
if you look up that disease, you know what I mean? So I'm just a firm believer, always have been. Even my dad smoked weed, rest, rest, you know, let me rest in peace. And I'm just glad to see it get legalized and people find the good in it. Well, you know, because you, know, you do know I make those medicated peach cobblers, right? I've never tried them down here. Down here in Canada, we, we have stuff like that, but... Uh... I, I I really still don't get my stuff from the stores. I don't know. Like I'm I'm from the era where you, where you got to go to a uh, you got to go in an alley and talk to and talk to one of the local crackheads to get to get the weed. You know what I mean? So I don't trust the government to be serious? honest with you. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. We just our, our weed just we just became legal a few years ago. Oh. Okay. So we we have oh. the weed we have the weed in stores now, but I I personally just don't trust the government to really see what they're doing with it. So I still I still go to local people. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay, you know, well, we got something in common. <laughs> you know, we had what, a battle rapper come out, come out uh, to CRS Battle League named D. Rose um, years ago when I was partnered up with the first guy that I was, that I was doing this with. And, um, yeah, so D, shout out to D. Rose. He's watching. He's listening right now. <laughs> But some of the names, though, that the government calls these strains scare the hell out of me. It makes, it makes me start tripping out before I even start smoking the weed. Like, I saw one called Death Vader, and it's like, am I going to die? <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. It's just, they're telling you it's really strong. That's all. But yes, okay. you're going to fall asleep. You know what I mean? Something like that. That's all it means, you know. Um, but in the, the best part is, is that weed is so... If we're, if we're at a point where we can look up a lot of things. So I would still say continue to give, get it from your homies, though. You know, that always, you know what I mean? Because they're the ones that sell me to the dispensary, so. And also as well, sometimes you got to support you got to support local local businesses too, right? And I'd rather they've been they've been going a lot longer than the government has. So you got to support those local businesses. That's right. That is absolutely right. Like CRS cutting all the smoke and WWW does cutting all the smoke. <laughs> And, and touching base on the Battle League here for a few moments, I have to ask about this, because obviously you said you started out as just as just like a sponsor slash promoter, and now you actually had the whole the entire league actually just like fell on your lap, and now you're the actual CEO and owner. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a story behind that, and of course, like, how did that, actually, how did that opportunity becoming the owner of this league actually come to be for you? Okay, so when it, when it first started off, we had a great guy, Justin Diaz, he put together a league. He asked me to sponsor, and he also had, we also had Simply Medical <clears throat> and Simply They Go Away Go. Those are two good friends of mine. And all of us, <clears throat> excuse me, along, he had another partner at the time. They fell out, and it was just him. And he said, hey, can we change the name to CRS? I said, can you say something? <laughs> if you put my name on here, uh, okay, you got to understand, this is my brand. So I'm going to be on you, right? He said, okay. So we changed, we changed it to CRS Battle League. And unfortunately, he got to a place where he, um, he needed to step back. I'll put it that way. And I felt that for the culture, we, our guys had been writing for two months, ready to go, ready to battle, right? And so I said, well, even if you're not there, I'm going to keep it going. He was like, he pretty much said I couldn't. So I was challenged. You know what I mean? And so I just had that battle, continued to have more battles, continued to remember that I didn't want this just to be battles. I wanted this to be experiences that people came to. So I've had battles, like, in very, like, in just wonderful places. Like, we just had Next out here, Next versus Shy Dog. Next month, uh, in November, we're having another huge battle. We, I just tried to, every time I did it, I tried to do it better. And because I had been hosting, um, you know, comedies, co-hosting, I'm sorry, for seven years, I had access to um, a lot of support, if you would. And it just, it grew. Anything you do for this culture and you're genuinely there doing it for the culture, it's going to grow because I didn't have to do let the guys step through. You understand? They wanted this lead. San Diego showed me the love. We, we wanted this here, you know? And that's what's happening now because, to be honest with you, uh, Shy, Shy Dog versus Next, I, I put together that battle. I had, along with myself and Bad News, Com I'm sorry, Bad News Brown, we put that battle together, and I caught COVID. I couldn't even go to the battle. I heard that that battle was so good that people were there like an hour, like, 
me share. It took me an hour to realize you weren't even there. You know what I mean? But it was so, because when you continue to do something over and over, you learn how to make it better. You know what I mean? Or there's every, there's a, everybody has a position, and every one of my people fell in. Yet we have my dear friend, Angie Garcia. She's been with me for like three years. We had Feel Thyself. That is my girl, Erica and her husband. We had Lux Lounge. We had uh, Truth on the mic. We had Bad News Brown. We had DJ Roscoe. We had Karma. Karma's been with me since for day one. When this, when this business first started, it was Karma was the videographer. I was the sponsor. And Justin and a couple guys owned the league. Before you knew it, the real one, cream rises to the top. Karma and I are still here, still still doing the same thing. Karma runs the uh, YouTube page. Karma runs the CRS page on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? It's just the love and the support and the loyalty will never go away because this is something built for the culture and built really for hip-hop. You know who, you'll know it's there and it's supposed to be there if it just continues to blossom, you know what I'm saying, and flourish and because of the people and the vibes that are around you. You know what I mean? This is hip-hop. You know, this is not, we're not showing off. We do this for the love of hip-hop. And by the way, Carter's out of uh, Oceanside, too. Shout out Oceanside. And also as well, while we're actually on the topic of CRS, I do know as well that you spoke briefly about your next to them, but I was wondering, uh, how, how does a ticket process work? Like, how, how do is it like a free admission, or do or where can individuals actually snag secure themselves some tickets that way they can come out and see the next battle rap live? Well, they can DM us on Instagram, and most of our events are either twenty or twenty five dollars. Um, I don't think we've ever had a place where no one didn't get in, but I can tell you this much. Anybody that did get in will tell you, say, those those are better than because I try to. You know what I think about? I always think about. I always think about something I learned from listening to you. <laughs> I think about the five elements. You get what I'm saying? And I think about DJing, and we don't beatbox. You know what I'm saying? But you know, we have great MCs. One battle, our very first battle, we we had like. One, maybe two blocks long, and it was an alley. So we had graffiti artists too. Do it was off the chain, okay? And um, I, I just, I just try to keep it about hip hop. Try to keep it about. I want people, like I said, when you come to a battle for CRS, you come to have an experience. And I gotta say as well, that that's the best way to be to to, to, to give. The, the viewers and give the fans a show you know there, there's a lot of bat battle leagues out there that are like that like exactly how you are but then there's also some that are more on the corporate side they just do the battle rap but they don't really include the other elements of hip-hop yes exactly i don't want to you know exactly i agree so hopefully uh, hopefully one day we can fly you out here hopefully we'll get so big or either we'll come to canada I got to say, I'm definitely up for that. You know what I mean? Just don't throw me in the cypher because I will probably make an ass of myself. There's a reason why I DJ. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why I DJ. I won't even attempt that. <laughs> okay. Only promise me this. I may, I'm not going to throw you in, but I'll just ask you to scratch just a little bit, okay? Hey, scratching, that that's what I'm good at. But if it comes to, like, actually spitting, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, the, the other. Let's just say it'll be an easy win for the other individual. They'll be going home with a trophy easily. <laughs> uh, you're too funny. And I'll just, I'd always be coming back to Canada with, with a lower self-esteem. No, come on. <laughs> but no, all, all jokes aside, though, definitely, uh, definitely, if I actually have my have my chance to come out to come out to uh, California, I'll definitely slide on through and actually catch one of those phenomenal events. Because I've been seeing what you guys have been doing, and uh, I'm not going to lie, it makes me jealous that I'm down here in Canada, and all this great hip-hop stuff is actually going down on, in California. It makes me wish that I could just uh, jump through a portal and just be there, but in due time, I'll be there, definitely in due time. I hope so. I, that would be great. And if, you know, I do have a passport, so don't, you know, don't rule me out. I heard they're, they're pretty intense, though, when they go to uh, Canada, right? <laughs> Yeah, our our border system is definitely uh, we'll we'll just say they're definitely a treat, and I'm being sarcastic when I say treat. <laughs> they are definitely uh, 
Uh, I'm going to summarize it to you like this there, Sherry. Uh, I, I, I remember I had tickets to see the game. Um, gosh, Lee, this was maybe about four, I would say four years ago, he was doing a Canada live tour. They would not let him across the border because he had a DUI from when he was like 18. Literally, he just had a DUI from when he was 18 and they would not let him in. Bro, are you serious? My, my word. That, that, so like, mind you, like, I wasn't, exactly. there, I wasn't there when they denied him, but that was a speculation on why everything got canceled. Like, they actually said it's due to a previous DUI. That's what I've heard, I heard from the promoters, so... And I'm just like, really? A DUI? Uh, like, I would see, like, maybe an assault charge, something that was really, that's deemed that could be, you know, a, a, that could maybe a, really affect another Canadian citizen. But a DUI? Like, come on. Like, this guy's not driving through Canada himself. He has a chauffeur. <laughs> this is insane, bro. Come on. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. You know what? But hopefully, if that's the case, I might have problems with me. But if you get out, I promise you, even if you make it to L.A. or Vegas, I'll come to you, okay? That that definitely sounds like a plan. I, I definitely agree to that. Yeah, you feel me? Because I'll, yeah, because, you know. <laughs> you must be heard what I said. <laughs> but also, as well, you were actually the host of your own radio show as well called Cut It, Roll It, and Smoke It. I was wondering if you can actually tell us a bit more about this radio show and of course, uh, where can our listeners actually tune in live or even watch your previously recorded broadcasts? Okay, so let me, I would love to share with you what, what happened. So, I guess about six years ago, I started just going live oh, a couple times a week. You know, and I loved to do it when I would go out of town. So, and, but it was nothing, you know, it was never, I was never consistent. So, as soon as the pandemic set in, my son said to me, Mom, you know what? You should go back into your full twenty podcast. Just do it a couple times a week. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to do it a couple times a week. I'm going to do it every day. So as God is my witness, I never missed a day for over 365 days. Every day I went live. I didn't, even if I didn't have a guest. So anyway, so I first started off in the vanity area in my uh, upstairs bedroom area, right? It's just a little, almost like a jail cell, right? <laughs> And then I have a producer, Jay Watt, from Jay Watt Productions. He, I went there a couple of times, and he finally said, you know what? He, he worked in radio, so he said, let me help set you up. And so we just got the system. We went Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We did that for about six months. And then finally, we just went, like, twice a week. And then I just started, you know, never stopping, constantly every day what I felt was bringing joy and laughter to all those rallies, which I know is my purpose, right? And it just grew. People just wanted to get on the show because here's this old 60, like the time I was like 60, 60. and I would just, I would say whatever was on my mind. I never had a problem with that. It was smoke. It was, it was just fun. And it was, it was entertaining, but it was healing because, as you know, when we first went in the pandemic, a lot of people were scared. A lot of people were alone. A lot of people were, Sad. A lot of people do lose their loved ones, and I took that, uh, I guess, quantum leap to say I'm gonna do this every day. This is like a commitment. And then after that, it was like, oh, I'm, you know, next thing I know, there's a girl named TC. She came down, TC the comedian, and she got an interview. And then she did a movie, and then she used one of my 420 podcasts. Then she was on my podcast. <laughs> Hold on a second. And uh, she, um, so there it is on Prime and Amazon and, you know, and then just, just, just all sorts of things. And so what I decided to do, thanks to Jay Rod, is we're going to have a season two. That's going to start next week. We've got people like TC Comedian coming back. We've got uh, Boss Man. You know what? Even Devin McGee asked me, he, he, was he with you in San Diego? He said, I want to be on the podcast. <laughs> like, he said, and then he asked me to tell him about it. It's just interesting. It's somewhere where you can go where I don't pressure people to have a 20 minute. I'm like you. If, if, if we buy, we buy. If we don't, we, you know, we have commercials, we have shout outs, we have 420 news, we have 420, um, uh, all, all kinds of shit. 
like the 420 meeting would be something that happened in 420, 420. Munchie fine would be something that I found to eat you know, within the town for people to smoke weed. You know, um, this over here is a hookah us. This over here is a new dispensary. This is this. You know what I'm saying? And the people just loved it. And I kept going, and then I got burnt after the pandemic started to settle in and, you know, people started taking their shots or whatever, and I was just getting tired of it. So I just kind of was led to just chill. And then it's been put on my heart that it's time to bring it back. But as you know, we're going back into the winter, and that's when the numbers start to rise. You follow? And I got to say, I definitely okay. agree, because everyone's going to be sitting inside. You know, they're going to be like, they don't want to go out in the freezing cold, especially at nighttime, man. The freezing cold is ridiculous. Yeah. I, I don't know about San Diego at nighttime, because I know you guys have mostly summer all year round, but down here in Canada, it definitely gets a tidbit nipply. Right. So with, I'm just thinking, even if without the cold, uh, people get sick. You want to see these numbers go back up with that cold shit. You feel me? So I'm ready to do it again, but on a different scale. Because I've come up with a new little twist. I like to be able to smoke my whatever and talk to different people, not just um, not just artists. I want to talk to doctors. I want to talk to lawyers. I want to talk to, you know, I want to talk to people, not just professionals. I want to talk to people with handicaps. I want to talk to athletes. I want to talk to everybody. So I'm going to start doing my twist where I'm just kind of, you know, um, I take a pen if I can't smoke. You follow? And I just... So you'll see. It'll start next week, and it'll be you'll really get a good vibe with it as I continue to do my three-part interview with Bossman out here who owns his own studio. I'm about to work with him with music, too. So it's all kinds of stuff. But again, you know what it is? It's being 63 years old. It's being congruent. You have to keep doing the same thing over and over, which is why I love you. I, I know that I'm going to get an interview every day. You know what I mean? And also as well, just during COVID as well, I was doing interviews every single night as well. And it's also it also gets addicting, you know what I mean? It's also, you kind of like, when you don't have an interview a certain night, you kind of sit back and go, what am I going to do tonight? Because <laughs> like, you're so used to that rhythm. And then when you actually decide to take a day off, it's not really a day off. You feel like you should be working. It's almost like not going into your 9 to 5 and being like, I'm going to go in and get fired tomorrow. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. It felt, it felt like, if I don't do anything else that day, I'm going to give a part of me up here. And I always tell God, listen, if just let to touch one person, then it's done for the job. You know what I mean? And also as well, you were actually partners with a, with another fellow San Diego individual uh, by the name of Trey Boogie of Boogie's Flavor. I was wondering if you can actually tell us a bit more about uh, that uh, business partnership. And of course, how did how did yourself and Boogie's Flavor originally get connected? Okay, so... First, I want to say this. Trey Boogie in the house. L. Okay, that's how that started. That little tagline I had for him was because somebody, I forgot what his restaurant, I think it was Black Mikey, um, who was a legend of the town. And who else? Somebody was going to see that? Anyway, they came. It was 12. That's who it was. Anyway, so, Black Lee's Flower Shadow. So, they brought Trey Boogie to be interviewed by me. And before I knew it, when the me and Trey Boogie bonded on the couch, but before Trey Boogie left, I knew that that's a cool guy. Like, I, there was just, like, he was just so humble. And he made sure repeatedly that I had someone to interview. He was constantly sending me people. In fact, that's how I got connected to you, was to see Trey Boogie, was because Trey has a way of networking bringing people together, bringing so many people together in, the, in this thing called hip-hop. And I, um, right now where I'm partnering up with him is, um, you know, as I, I have the league, and so I would venture to say maybe once every other month we will be connecting with him. Uh, we'll have some battle rappers from my league, and they will open up his industry takeover that he does at five once a month. And I haven't gotten to the specifics of this because I've been out of town. As you know, my husband donated his kidney to his sister. So I just got back, but it's something that Trey uh, just presented, and not just, but asked me to do. And as I said, he, he's, well, he's shown me nothing but love, and I will never show him nothing but love and respect because I watched him open so many doors and really connect people 
and really believe and be a part of this thing called hip hop. Because Trey, you know his history, right? Uh, Trey, Trey, yeah. Well, he actually is the uh, he's actually the sponsor of our radio station. I've interviewed him a couple times. Work alongside him very closely. Okay, he's one of your sponsors, right? Oh uh, yeah, he actually sponsors the radio station. Yet. Yes. <laughs> I love Trey. Shout out Trey. Damn it. Yeah, because Trey, like I said, he's the reason why I know of you and so many others. And like I said, my 420 podcast, Trey Boogie helped Cherry multiple times, bringing people on that couch. Because it's not just about me doing this podcast. It's about having people like Trey that can help you have a place to go to promote your goods, your talent. That smoked some bomb ass weed and kicking with an old lady that's just cool as fuck. You feel me? Trey was about that. And that's how I am when it comes to him. I send a lot of people to his events. I send a lot of rappers to him because Trey is the plug. And I got to say, before we move off this topic, definitely shout out to Trey Boogie. He's doing his thing as well. He has that. Uh... And they has an industry takeover that he actually is bringing back doing that solo. Then he has the uh, comedy Sundays. I mean, this individual, Trey's just doing show after show after show. And it's like, man, he is like a booking machine, I'm telling you. But definitely shout out to Trey Boogie. I know he's out there uh, under a palm tree somewhere sipping on a margarita, you know, listening to this. So definitely shout out to the homie Trey. <laughs> <laughs> shout out Trey Boogie. Hey, <laughs> And also as well, April 19th of 2022, you actually released the phenomenal song titled 420 Energy. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a story and inspiration behind this amazing song. And of course, where can we actually buy or stream ourselves a copy of it today? Okay. So, when I first, okay, as I, did, as I moved along doing the podcast with Jay Watt, of Jay Watt Productions, I, I first did a cover to a rap song as, you know, like the opening song. And so then I fell in love with Lotto song. But it was saying big oh, energy, right? And me being a woman of a particular age, I said, I want to do a remix. So we did a remix, which is 420 energy versus big, big, big energy. You feel me? But the beat is what got me is because, of course, I know who's, who's on that beat long before any of these kids were on there because I'm older than them. You know what I mean? So I we used J Y used the original beat and we did the um, the remix and we really what I found in rap if you just keep it 100 your song is going to be wonderful and so that's what you hear you hear I got that 420 energy because that's how I feel um, but but you know of course it's some things I have put in. Where it says bad bitch, big bag energy, I could have said bad big bag energy because I had to make it where it would be radio play. Not radio play because of somebody else's feet, but you know what I mean. I wanted to make it to where it's like it's suitable for each crowd because of my age. You know what I mean? But like I said, I just think a lot of hot shit and I just, I love to do like remixes off of, um, of six of songs like hers. Uh, shout out. So it was fun, and I'm glad you like it. But where they can find it is on YouTube. The, the, uh, oh, let me tell you about that, too. So Leah, me and Ryan Bowers are the best friends. He's no longer with us, R.I.P. Ryan Bowers. But Leah is his girl, his, 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 well, you know, Leah was his girlfriend. So Leah is on the hook of the 420 Energy song. And then there's a gentleman friend of mine named Faye Green, who just battled on one of our last battles. His sister is the one that's speaking Japanese on that track. So there's a lot that went into that. And, um, you know, like, on you know, my original video, I to Snap God. You know, he, it was just, it was meant to be. You know what it's meant to be when it turns out like that. And I'm glad you like it. And we're working on some new stuff, too. I've got a couple songs coming. I've, got, I've already done, like, three songs with Big June and one with Ryan Bowers. That one's going to drop. I did a song with Ryan Bowers like eight months long prior before he ever left us. So it is myself and Big Gene, so that's going to drop. So I, I'm just kind of keeping it spicy, trying to keep, stay busy and stay hip-hop and stay with this music thing, you know what I mean? These young folks keep me young. <laughs> 
and I gotta say as well, I'm definitely looking forward to actually hearing that uh, that song with Big Big June. Well, when is that actually getting released? Is that, is that something you have on the back burner right now, or is it actually currently being prepped to be released to all streaming services? Well, that's probably gonna be released like soon. And um, with June, I just got back. We're probably gonna be shooting the video like within the next month. See, June is very particular though. He's like, we're not gonna shoot it unless we have the visuals. Which I, I love him because he teaches me a lot with this whole music thing, and, and I and I understand that. We want it to be good too because Ray is in the song, and you know, with respect to his mom and everybody, you know, we got some things coming up for his uh his. Anyway, I will talk about that later, but. Yeah, um, this song right here with Joan and, and uh, Ryan is like, every time I hear it, it's like, it really does something for me because it's the reason I keep going because he saw something in me long before any of this unfolded. And for him to have said those things, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you just, you, you never know how you touch people. But when they tell you, listen, you know, and hold on to those memories, I and mean, I remember one of the things that impressed me the most of Brian Bowers was his work ethic. And so that's kind of what, where I'm at. I got really try to go hard and stay focused and continue to work and continue to reinvent myself because that's what I saw him do, you know? And But at the same time, he was doing what he loved, and I'm doing what I love, you know? And also as well, as we spoke about throughout the interview, that you were a marijuana enthusiast, you've been smoking weed for over 50 years. So with that being said, of course you have your own brand, you have your own merchandise line. But I have to ask, do you have any plans to actually bring out your own brand of marijuana? And I'm probably, I'm pretty sure you probably got asked that so many times. Wait, say that again? I was just Maybe. wondering if you actually plan on bringing out your own, uh, your, your own brand of marijuana. Yes, we are. You know what? Honestly, I'm gonna keep it 100. I it would have been happened if I would have done the way done it the way a lot of people want me to do it. But the way I want to do it is with the grower and be consistent with it and really know that it's being done right. You know what I mean? Um, yes, but that's the next phase. Also, not just um, my own strain, but I would like my own pre rolls. That was one of the things that I was gonna drop at the last battle. Was um, I think I teamed up with. Uh, Anyway, I don't know if they want me to talk. But anyway, I think that I'm going to start having my own pre rolls And then, yes, which ultimately, that's what the goal is, is to have our own strain of weed. That would be the bomb, okay? It, will, it can only be the bomb. I know. If people tell you, Sherry smokes good weed, okay? Period. <laughs> And I have to ask, since this is something you uh, you actually spoke about and thought about, did you, have you actually thought about a name for it, or is that just something you haven't really sat down and thought about yet? Well, it, it'll probably be, I mean, knowing me, it'll be something like CRS, like maybe this, I'll take the initials and we'll figure out something. It'll be, it'll still be CRS. Do you know what I mean? And also with I mean, what? Yeah, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. My, my apologies. Go ahead. My apologies. No, go ahead. You're good. I was just going to ask, what is next for yourself? Like, is there anything we happen to miss during tonight's broadcast? Anything else you do still want to talk about or promote? Well, we still got you here live on 97.7 FM this evening. Well, I would like to promote my clothing line. I have cut it, roll it, smoke it uh, t-shirts and cut up t-shirts and booty shorts. and I've been doing it for a long time, but I neglect to promote that from time to time. So that's www.cuttingrollitsmokeit. Um, and also, you know, if anyone is looking to get into a battle league here in San Diego, we just had our first battle. You can go to CRS Battle League. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube, and please, if you know anybody with some serious bars that's committed to the culture and that really is looking for a good home, uh, we got Shy Dog. Shy Dog is just committed to wanting to be part of our league and help me get this league to, back to where we were. Please let us know. And, of course, let me explain something. I think we overlooked something. So when you ask about Kurt Rose Smoke in my podcast, it's actually 420 with your girl. That's the name of it. So we're about to have a new page for that set up by the end of next week. It's 420 with your girl. That's, but you can find my previous um, recordings on Instagram, Cutting Rose Smoke it, 
all you have to do is go to the Instagram live TV thing, whatever you're doing. Know. <laughs> I'm really bad with this Instagram shit, but. And also, Sherry, this is the time of the interview, Ron, yeah. that I give a chance for the individual that does slide into the radio station airwaves. Just a chance to give, like, shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. But most of all, your social media handles. Uh, that way our listeners can follow you, yourself, and, of course, your brand across all social media platforms if they're not already doing so. Okay. First, I wanted to uh, uh, go listen to 420 Energy on SoundCloud. That's the video for my new song. Shout out, Leah. Also, Sherry Eli. It's Sherry Like the Wine. S H E R R Y E L I E dot official. That's, I have a page on Instagram. I also have cut it, roll it, smoke it dot official on Instagram. And whatever you do, C R S Battle League is in representation of San Diego 619. It's a big okay. Please add the page. And I'm going to say first and foremost, uh, Sherry, thank you so much for just giving us a bit of your time here this evening and sliding into the 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM airwaves. It was definitely an honor and most definitely a privilege, and hopefully down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. I look forward to it, and that's what I'd like to do, too. Can I bring you in? Can I interview you? Hey, most definitely. Honestly, I I've been interviewed a few times, but uh, I I sometimes it's great to actually kind of have the uh, – Kind of like the, the the script flipped on you, you know what I mean? The interviewer get interviewed, and I guess you actually know that experience now because it's it's literally happening as we speak. I know, and it was so easy and so comfortable. So I think that if if they, if I were to bring you in, it would be perfect because it's all a vibe, you know what I mean? And anybody can vibe with you. That's why I could see why you got everybody adding you these days. I saw that DJ quick stuff, man. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. My my heart skipped a beat when I saw DJ Quick like slide up. Cause like I I, I like sub subscribe to them. You know what I mean? I subscribe to their like lives. So I, I like watching the lives. You know, keeping up with your favorite artists. And then I I thought I said DJ Quick started. So at first I ignored it. I'm like he started a live. I'm busy right now. I'll watch it later or something. But then I went to my Instagram, left a notification. It said started following you. It wasn't started a live. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, wait, what? So at first I was like, no, that that, that must be a, one of those fake accounts, scammer pages, right? So I, 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 I like tossed the phone to my wife. I'm like, Is it, do, you, do you see what I'm seeing? She's like, yes, it's DJ Quick. It's a blue check. I'm like, okay, so you, you're, I'm not tripping. Like, you see this, right? <laughs> Hey, you know what? Shout out DJ Quick. You can get, listen. I have a friend named Ask him about Kenneth Crouch. Okay, Kenneth Crouch. Ask DJ Quick because you gonna get that interview. Trust me. I heard he's a very humble guy. I've seen it with my own two eyes because Kenneth Crouch FaceTimed him with me in the car one day, and I was like, damn. So he knows about the medicated peach cobbler. <laughs> but you are amazing. Anybody wanna. I, I, I see you. I, I pro Listen, it is an honor. It is a privilege. Anytime you want me to be on here, you let me know. And I thought it was an honor for you to reach out to me. Thank you so much for seeing the, you know, what I do and what I bring. And it's, you know, and I want to say on behalf of all of us in the in the hip hop community in the hip hop culture, thank you for what you do because you are about it, about it. You are serious about it, and I love your station. I gotta say thank you so much. You know, when, when when people talk like that and give me that praise, I I'm not I, I don't want to come off and sound rude. I just don't really know what to say. I just do what I do for the love of the music, but it, it really does mean a lot. And I can definitely say I'm definitely blushing over here. So thank you so much for the kind words. I just do what I do because I love hip hop, and I'm I'm sick of the mainstream. I'm sick of this skinny jean bubble gum mumble. I don't know whatever the heck you want to call it type music. So it's time to bring real hip hop back. And a special shout out to your wife. I gotta say, definitely. I'll make sure I relay that message to her when I actually get back home from the studio. Or if she's, or if she's can listening, I then... can I play something on the radio real quick? I definitely, if you want to. Can you hear? It? Okay, listen. Isn't that crazy? I gotta say that 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 beat is that beats hard. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, that's funky. 
there. That was a lot of them, but that's who I did the remix for. When I tell you, listen, when I'm when I'm ready to drop the uh, ET or whatever the hell these kids are calling it, whatever they're doing in my in my videos, I'm gonna make sure I DM you, okay? We got to do this again. It was such a pleasure, okay? Hey, you're you are most certainly welcome, and also as well, if you when when the EP is done, if you send it, we here at Outlaw Radio FM are definitely gonna spin it. Thank you so much again, Sherry, and definitely have yourself a phenomenal night out there in San Diego, California. You too, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate the honor, and I'm honored. I appreciate it as well. The, the feeling is definitely mutual, Sherry. Thank you so much again. You're welcome, bud. Take care.